news, and, and current, current affairs. affairs. Top stories of the day. Business, sports, music, and entertainment. Dadalhin sa inyo. Dadalhin sa inyo. Ang mas pinaganda, mas pinalawak, mas pinalakas. Radyo Pilipinas. Radyo, Radyo Pilipinas. Radyo Pilipinas ago. DZAG 97.1 FM. Sabay-sabay nating tunghayan at pakinggan ang programang Katid ay Kaalaman. Inihahandog sa inyo ng Binsu at 97.1 Radio Pilipinas Ago. Ito ang Library on Air. Kaibigan sa magandang-magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa isa naman pong edisyon ng ating programang Dimsu Library on Air. Ngayon po ay araw ng Viernes, December 17, 2021. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Charity Jimenez Frianeza. Makasama po ninyo sa loob po ng isang oras nating talakayan. At hindi po makukumpleto ang ating programa kung wala pong aking magiging partner po mula po sa Dimsu Library Aking partner po for today, walang iba, kundi si Miss Kathleen Joyce Perona. Good morning, Miss Kathleen. Good morning, Ma'am Charity. Ayan. Good morning, good morning. Isang mapagpalang umaga, mga kabasa. Welcome na naman po tayo sa ating isang very interesting and informative episode ng Dimsu Library on Air. Ako ang inyong makakasama sa ating isang oras na talakayan, Kathleen Joyce Perona with the team Library headed by Dr. Nancy F. Galvan. So, live na live po tayo sa ating mga FB pages rin po. Yes. Teams to Libraries at Radio Pilipinas Ago. Mm -mm. At special din po ang magiging episode po natin ngayon. Ayan. Ka, Parang ano natin, first time din po siyang magiging guest sa program natin. Yes, Kaya, at napakahalaga nung magiging topic natin, especially po yung mga kumukuha din ng uh, Library and Information Science. Yan. At yung mga gustong maging librarian, walang iba po ipapakilala po sa inyo ni Ma'am Kathleen Joyce Perona ang ating magiging guest po for today. Miss yeah. Kathleen? Dahil nga special po ang episode natin ngayon, dahil ating ibabahagi ngayong umaga ang Master in Archives and Records Management Program ng UPSLIS. So, itong program na ito is one of its first kind in the country and in Southeast Asia. So, bago po tayo pumunta dyan, ipakilala po muna natin ang ating panauhin ngayong araw. So, our guest for today is currently an Associate Professor at the School of Library and Information Studies, University of the Philippines, Diliman and the uh, Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Journal of Librarianship and Information Studies, formerly known as the Journal of Philippine Librarianship. It is the oldest and longest-running academic journal in the list in the Philippines. She obtained her doctorate degree in Information Studies from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, and both her graduate and undergraduate degrees in Library and Information Science from the UPSLIS. She teaches courses on LIS and archival studies at the undergraduate and graduate levels, particularly research and methodology in LIS, qualitative research and archival theory and practice. She is also one of the main proponents of the recently approved program na pag-uusapan po natin ngayon, Mga kabasa, our dear viewers and listeners, we are honored to invite Dr. Ira Buenrustro Cabal. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning po, ma'am. Hello, good morning po sa lahat. And thank you so much for inviting me to your program this morning. 
Ayan, ma'am, uh, napakahalaga at very exciting no yung uh, magiging topic po natin for today. Master in Archives and Records Management Program of UP School of Library Information Science. no. So, sabi nga kanina sa introduction po sa inyo, ay kauna-unahan po at uh, dito pa sa Southeast Asia. So, bago po natin yan pupuntahan yung topic natin na yan, ma'am, eh, baka pwede nyo muna pong ma-share sa atin, sa ating mga listeners and viewers, how did Master of Archives and Records Management Program itong UPSLIS started, ma'am? Sige. Um, this program po, yung Master in Archives and Records Management uh, you offer po siya uh, under the UP School of Library and Information Studies. So, para magiging kapareha siya, no? parang ka-level ano, ng Master of Library and Information Science na in-offer naman natin for, for the longest time already. So, ano nga ba itong programa na to at paano siya nagsimula? So, itong Master of Archives and Re Master in Archives and Records Management, matagal na siyang pinaplano. Um, siguro mga late 90s or mga early 2000, meron na talagang call ano, for, uh, for, for UP or even for the profession itself to have a formal education, formal education for those who would like to work sa mga archives and record centers and doon din para sa mga nagtatrabaho na sa mga archives and record centers and other memory institutions or even sa mga libraries na meron mga archival collection. So matagal ng plano ito pero ngayon lang talaga nagkaroon ng um, talagang ma, ma pursige na talagang na pursige na i-push at i-offer itong programa na ito. So nagsimula kami na siguro isulat yung yung proposal siguro mga 2017, 2018, yun talagang we, we really sat down at talagang pinag-usapan namin around 2019. So mahaba po talagang proseso ng uh, pag, uh, paghahanda para puro sa program na to. At mara, mara, malaki yung pasasalamat namin sa mga nauna na sa amin yung sila. Of course, sila Professor Yolanda Granda, Professor Emery. So sila yung mga nauna na nagplano kung paano mga makakapag-offer ng program na to. And then talagang sinundan namin, lalo na noong nagkaroon na kami ng mga faculty. Kasi dati, ilan lang yung mga faculty na nagtuturo ng archives and records management. Eh medyo dumami na kami at nasimula na namin na sulatin yung proposal na yon at makapag-offer na po nitong programa. At magsa-start po siya by next academic year 2022-2023. Oh, ibig sabihin UP Diliman pa lamang po no ang mag offer po nito, uh, ma'am. Opo. Uh, first of its kind. Uh, sinasabi namin na first of its kind dahil may, sa Southeast Asia may mga courses naman um, especially in the graduate level pero iba yung kanilang focus din eh. Kunwari, um, um, so yeah, I think in, in Malaysia and Vietnam, they also have uh, po, uh, graduate degrees on document management, records management, so mga at information management still under the wing of LIS or information management. So sa amin, ang ginawa namin dahil gusto namin na mag-focus din sa theoretical grounding ano, ng, ng bakit nga ba tayo nag-archive, pinagsama namin yung archives and records management. So parang ano siya, we're hitting um, two birds with one stone. Na parang kapag meron kayong um, ganitong klaseng kurso o makapag-enroll kayo sa programa nito, yung parehas na dimension, ng, a very pragmatic na dimension no, ng, ng records management at yung napaka-theoretical, cultural at historical, nandun naman sa archival studies, pinagsama namin. So kung titingnan ninyo yung curriculum ng, uh, ng MARM, Sabi, may nakapagsabi nga sa amin, especially from from those from uh, sa, sa western part, ano, na, napaka, parang ang, ang unique ng, ng curriculum kasi pinagsama namin siya. Kasi para sa iba, iba pinaghihiwalay talaga nila. But I think dahil dun sa ginawa namin na survey, uh, meron kami demand survey na ginawa rin pala. Bago namin siya talaga sinulat yung proposal, Inalam muna namin ano nga ba yung pulso ng ng mga ng mamamayan ng mga gusto mag-enroll sa program. So we gathered around siguro marami-rami rin na ilang daan din yung nag-nag-participate pati may mga taga Southeast Asia din, ibang region din, ay ibang countries din na nag-participate. So nakita namin na hati eh, may gusto ng archival studies, meron din na records management. So pinagsama namin yung dalawang yon para sa isang programa. 
Yun ang magaling eh, di ba? Sabi nga ni Ma, may isang stone lang ang ibabato mo, di ba? Oo. <laughs> Tapos ang maganda rin kasi dito, um, dahil tinignan namin, nag, kumbaga nag-survey muna kami, Mm-mm. bago namin talaga pinagtulakan yung programa. Kasi sus- kailangan namin sulatin yung mga courses, eh, ano yung mga i-offer namin. So nakita namin pati yung background, no? yung work background, the educational background of those who would be enrolling or who would be so interested to enroll in the program. So, yun yung pinagbasehan namin. Ayun, nakita natin. Parang fitting. Pero, ma'am, ano naman po yung importance ng program na ito sa ating mga librarians? Naku, malaki. <laughs> malaki talaga. Kasi, di ba, library, do pag librarians, di ba? Tayo yun. Um, iba-iba yung materials na hinahawakan natin. And then, um, napapansin din natin, no, in the in the in the in the more recent years, na alake ng nagiging shift then dun sa um, dun sa trabaho natin, na hindi lang published materials yung ating pinaproseso or na acquire, but we're also acquiring um, historical materials. And then, alake ng expectations sa mga librarians, sa so, parang kailangan pag librarians magaling ka sa lahat, pati pag paano ma preserve to mga materials na to. And those things, those competencies are usually not covered dun sa existing na program natin. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, di ba, ang UPS Elias, ang sipag magpa-webinar, di ba, no? free webinar, kayo may mga training-training kami. Meron di kami survey after nun eh. Ano ang gusto ninyo na uh, may offer no? ng UPS Elias para sa iba? Karamihan ng mga suggestions nila or requests nila ay mga paksa ano tungkol sa archives and records management and how to preserve so ibig sabihan yung expectations para sa atin at yung mga yung yung trabaho natin as librarians lumalaki din siya so kaya naman itong program na to hindi lang siya naka-concentrate din sa mga um, records officers sa mga archivists no pati sa librarians um we're also inviting those from other fields no to to actually enroll or if they're interested in archives and records eh, go ahead we parang open naman kami na mag-accept ng mga um, enrollees no or yeah estudyante sa program so ang laki talaga laki <laughs> sobrang laki lalo ngayon di ba sobrang dami ng materials that we need to handle and manage ayan ako very interesting po pero yung mga ibang ano kasi nakakuha na ng LIS di ba at mas, gust, oh, gusto lang kumuha ng uh, Master in Archives and Records Management Program. Ma'am, baka pwede i-share niyo ano po yung scope nito? Ano po ba yung mga hmm. subjects na ino-offer po under this program po? Okay, uh, so yung mga subjects na to, it's actually a two-year uh, two uh, graduate program kung full-time ka. Full-time, ibig sabihin, you have nine units, ano, six to nine units. Actually, nine units eh, per semester. So, yung nine units, tatlong subjects. No? So, ano yung mga courses? So, meron tayong courses on archival, of course, archival theories no? and concepts kasi doon natin uh, i-explain kung ano nga ba yung theoretical underpinning ano, ng, ng, ng ating profession. Why are we doing this? Bakit tayo nag-archive? Ano ang kahalagahan ng archive? So usually kasi yun yung nawawala sa mga trainings. No? Kapag kasi may mga trainings tayo, i-explain agad sa inyo, oh, ito yung kailangan ninyong gawin para mag-handle kayo ng dokumento. So kailangan natin, um, I think, or personally you know, sa, um, sa part namin, kailangan ipaintindi ng mga buti sa ating mga practitioners na kung gano'ng kahalaga, gano'ng kahalaga yung hinahawakan nilang dokumento. Para may continuity, may continuity and sustainability dun sa ginagawa nila. Tapos, meron din tayong course, of course, courses sa mga, yung mga basic archival functions na simula sa um, appraisal, no? paano ka makamamimili, paano ka mag evaluate ng records, meron din tayong course ng arrangement, description, yung mga practical, no? And of course, preservation, We also have another course on laws and ethics as regards um, the use and management of records and archives. So, napakalaga ng course na ito kasi ano yung ethics ano, and yung mga legislations involving, uh, involved in the management and use and even preservation of records. Tapos meron din tayong course on, on preservation, 
uh, management, tapos meron din tayong course on digital preservation. And then we have um, electives, meron din kaming electives na nakaredy na din. At ito yung naman yung para paano ka mag-manage ng mga public records, paano ka mag-manage ng audiovisual records, even web archiving, we also have a course on that. So, depende na rin sa availability and demand ng mga estudyante um, kung kailan namin i-offer itong mga electives ito. But so far, the core courses would be about the concepts, the theories, and of course, the, the, the core functions of archiving and record keeping. talagang napaka-interesting. At dahil ma'am, marami po ngayon ang na yung pagkatapos nila ng kanilang undergraduate degrees, mm -hmm. is gusto nilang mag-enroll ng master's degree. So, yeah. ma'am, ano pong mas magandang piliin, ma'am? MLIS or itong At Master in, in Archives and Records Management? Oh, hindi ko masasagot yan. <laughs> Kasi, ano rin naman, nagtuturo pa rin ako ng MLIS, eh, no? Kung maganda, nasa, kami ay nasa poder pa rin ng ng School of Library and Information Studies sa uh, UP uh, para sa akin magkapatid yung dalawang programa na yan eh yung MLIS at yung MARM so siguro magandang tanong na lang ay ano ba ang uh, career trajectory ng estudyante and ano nga ba yung interest niya kaya I think mahalaga din yung foundations eh kumbaga yung kanyang undergrad ano kung Kung maganda yung undergraduate degree niya, yung naparealize sa estudyante na, oh, ito, ito yung maganda, o ito yung tingin mo magiging interesting for you, or ito yung magiging career mo probably in the next 5-10 years, then makakapag-isip yung estudyante early on, ano, ano kayo mag e this kaya ako, mag-marm ako. Uh -oh. Pero ito, ito na lang, tip na lang din, kasi yung marm is, ang marm kasi ay hindi siya, a uh, required course for a licensure examination. Unlike yung MRIS kasi, di ba, na, If you'd like to to um, to really establish a career in librarianship at gusto mo mag licensure examination, you should be going that way. Yung yung MLIS. Ang marm kasi is is not a hindi siya requirement. I mean, hindi hindi allowed yung marm ano, according to the law, to the Republic Act 9246. So mamano na lang yung magiging requirement para may accept po sila for the Master in Archives. and records management program. Ang kailangan ba ay ang bachelor's degree nila is LIS din? Ay, hindi po. Not necessarily. Um, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, napaka lawak ng coverage natin kasi lahat naman po tayo ay gumagamit ng records, ng information, lahat tayo may kasaysayan. Uh, so lahat ng, ng any bachelor's degree po ke, um, are welcome ano, to, to apply to the program. Meron lang kami required na grade. May mga requirements lang din na, uh, you know, yun, 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 the usual process naman ng pag-accept ng, ng mga master students sa UP, they have to undergo those. Yan. So, ma'am, baka may iba dyan na gusto din pong mag, ano eh, gusto mag-enroll, no? Kasi Kathleen nga, sabi niya, naku, parang yun na yata ang kanilang <laughs> iba, opening masters eh. So, ano yung mga requirements po, ma'am, for enrollment? Okay. So, una po sa lahat, Uh, ang kailangan po ay, syempre kailangan may undergraduate degree ka, nakatapos ka na, di ba? So, you weighted average uh, would be around two or equivalent. Kasi syempre may ibang universities na hindi naman yung one to five na parang yes, uh, one highest, uh, five lowest yung criteria for judging nila. So, two, that's the minimum. And then, um, merong mga kailangan may recommendation letters from their direct supervisor or former uh, professor. Tapos, uh, yung standard test and admission uh, requirements ng university meron kami noon. So, you can check our website. So, ang uh, magandang tanong, yung retention. <laughs> so, paano ka mananatili? Paano sa retain, uh. Uh, so, once na na-accept ka na, di masaya na tayo, na-accept ka na. So, you should have, um, parang yung average mo, should have should be at least two per acad up. Uh, Two, tapos kailangan alam ka walang failing grade. So, kapag naman yata, yon parang gano'n, no? failing grade. Tapos, uh, for the graduation naman, um, this is a non-thesis program, by the way. Uh, parang so, napawaw sila, ma'am, sinabi ng non-thesis. <laughs> yes, this is a, a non-thesis program. Um, so, all you have to do is finish all the coursework. So, again, this is a 34-unit program. Um, 
uh, program. So, kailangan nyo matapos yung, yung, yung capstone ninyo. It's a capstone project. It's not a, it's not a thesis, but it's more than a case study. So, it's a capstone project. And then, comprehensive exam. Okay? So, wala pong, wala pong thesis to. So, ayan. Ayun, tara. Tapos, yun talaga mo, napapawaw kami. <laughs> Lalo na nung sinabi mong walang thesis. Parang, ang exciting mag-exam. Parang equivalent mag siya na, na ano, okay, case study. Oo. Okay. Okay. Pero, exam. Yes. how long naman po, ma'am, para matapos ang program nito? And, magiging online po ba ito, ma'am? Online okay. na po ba siya? So, uh, how long? Uh, we're, this a, this a, in an ideal world, <laughs> Two years, ano? Two years siya. Sabi ko kanina, kung siguro full-time ka, no, lagi ka nagsi six units or nine units, tapos wala ka namang, wala kang dinadrop na subject, kaya. So, you can finish it in two years, di ba? Um, including na rin yung capstone doon and then the comprehensive exam. Kasi those, those two will take place at your last semester. Eh. In an ideal scenario, ah. Kasi meron kami mga plan naman, eh. Tapos po, yung online, Yun yung hindi ko rin masagot for now kasi although we're already um, doing it online kasi di ba nag online classes naman na tayo, I think we will be continuing that especially in the graduate program but it may not be a purely online program because we designed this this um, this program thinking now we will be going back to normal. Na parang ganyan. Pero of course, we can make some arrangements siguro Dahil nakita naman namin, to be honest ako, nakita ko din, in the graduate level, um, in my classes in MLIS, nag-work ang online. Dahil madami ko kunyari, nasa malayo, iba, umuwi na ng probinsya. Pero they are able to, ano naman eh, to participate and ano, to, to submit all the requirements, nakapag-discuss naman kami. So we're also taking that into consideration that we may, uh, we may also do that, ano, or we may maintain that mode of um, learning and teaching. Yan, kasi may mga iba na gusto ding mag-enroll, pero medyo malayo, no? Parang uh, malayo sa UP din yes, naman. Yes, totoo po. Ang, ang tanong lang namin doon, um, siguro baka kailangan nila mag-dedicate ng time din. Kasi may marun kaming core course on uh, preservation and digital preservation. Mm -hmm. So, this would require them to really be present eh. Kasi may lab yun eh. May laboratory work. So parang hindi natin kayang gawin yan online, di ba? <laughs> Paano ko magpe-preserve? So parang, yeah. So siguro kailangan nagkaroon talaga ng arrangement plus the fact that you enrolled or you you ano, you ano applied to the program, ibig sabihin nun, kailangan mo mag-dedicate talaga ng time and effort to finish it on time. Kasi you cannot expect yourself to finish it in two years tapos hindi mo kukunin yung subjects, di ba? So, yeah. So a bit of sacrifice din and adjustment. Kailangan talaga ng sacrifice. At syempre, sabi nga niya, tayong mag adjust no? Kasi gusto din naman natin <laughs> talagang matapos. At yes. gusto natin makuha, no? Yung degree na ito. Ma'am, kanina, nabanggito niya iba yung mga career opportunities pag uh, na kapag enroll po dito sa program na ito. Aka, pwede pa po natin mas uh, elaborate kasi may mga iba na hindi po nila naintindihan kung ano po ba yung career opportunities, ma'am, after po nilang makuha itong program na ito. Okay. Um, so usually kasi, di ba, sa lahat ng mga local government, um, marami rin tayong mga public, private, academic, and research institutions na merong archives, may records offices, mga corporations, ay, mga banko, meron din. And then, um, lahat ng to, kinakailangan ng mga records officers and also archivists. You know? And then we also have um, several key cultural heritage institutions. Of course, we have the Cultural Center of the Philippines, we have the NHCP, we have the National Museum, we have the NLP, we have the NAP, National Archives. And um, ngayon, pinapropose na magkaroon tayo ng bagong Philippine Audiovisual Archive Center. Um, so, Ang daming possibilities, ano. And also, kung hindi man kayo mag-work talaga, na hindi kayo literal na you will be dealing with documents and records, ano. Ang laki ng, ng, ng magiging tulong na to, to those who would like to do scholarship, ano. Scholarship in terms of archival studies then and historical studies. So, marami nagiging interesado dito. Actually, yung mga nagiging interesado dito ay yung mga currently working na. at yung iba na nagre-research on archives. 
So, yun yung, ano, so, napaka, uh, kung maga parang andami yung pwedeng maging career din. Plus, ang maganda pa nun, kunyari, undergrad yun na, library science, tapos, na ganito kayo. E di, andami yung expertise. So, magaling ka na sa library, magaling ka pa sa archives, magaling ka pa sa records management. So, yeah. So, ang galing-galing mo na. <laughs> so, ang dami mong talent and skills. Eh, sabi yeah. ka ni Miss Ketley, o pwede kang kumuha din, o, di ba? Kaya nga parang jack of all trades ka na eh. Yeah, oo, oh, oh, di ba? Tsaka kahit na hindi ka librarian, pwede kang kumuha. Pwede kang mag-enroll oh. ng marm. Mm-hmm. Madami po nag-express ng interest eh, from the different fields. For example, from fine arts, from history, from curatorial studies, ano pa ba, from anthropology. So marami na nagtatanong kasi nga they really see the importance of records. And some of them, actually marami sa kanila, Kaya nila gusto mag-aral. Kasi they get frustrated then with the current state of records no? in the Philippines. <laughs> Kasi di ba parang nalulungkot tayo, kawawa na may records natin, ay kawawa na may archives natin. Parang luray-luray na, or oh, ganyan. Po, no? Di ba? So some of them, um, kahit hindi sila librarian, they want to to enroll dahil yun nga yung out of frustration and concern din din sa ating current na documentary heritage. So, sabi nila, so they, they have to, to, to do something about it. So, yeah. Kasi mga ibang nasa records officer, ay, hindi rin naman talaga sila maalam yeah. pa. Gaano, yes. no? So, sa pamagitan po nito, ay mas madadagdag yung kanilang mga skills at magiging mas efficient po sila as records officer. Not only, siguro yung mga librarians natin. Yeah. Chaka, I think it's one of the one of the major steps then for for us, you know, for for all of us, even the the country itself, to to realize the importance of records and having a profession, having professional records and archivists. Kasi di ba nag-start, parang tayo mga librarians din naman, bago naman tayo ma-professionalize, ang tagal eh, ang tagal din naman, di ba? So, I think having this formal education will make all of us realize, or even the, the different stakeholders then ano, realize na, fi- na kailangan na ma-professionalize din yung, 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 yung pagiging archivist, pagiging records officers. So dahil doon, magkakaroon ng impact din yun. Para snowball effect eh. Magkakaroon din ng impact yun. This is state of archives and records ng bansa natin. Kasi for now, lagi nilang nakakalimutan sila eh. Di ba? Nakakalimutan, napapabayaan. Kasi sabi nila, um, they, we don't know how to arrange this. We don't know how to preserve this. Bakit? Kasi there are no people, um, actually professionals, who could actually do these things, you know? So it's a chicken and egg situation. Walang tao, wal, hindi mag records. So bakit walang tao? Kasi wala nagtitrain sa kanila. Wala nag educate sa kanila. So here, so what we have now is something that can help, no? Our, our, our colleagues, the different stakeholders, and also the state of archives and records in the Philippines talagang napakahalaga. Kasi mostly din naman kasi ma'am is parang designation din yung mga binibigay sa ating mga records officer. Pag, oo, tsaka walang transition talaga na kuan. Kahit kung sino lang yung nilil- ilalagay doon na records officer, yun na yun. Oo, oh, oh, totoo yan. So, dyan nagsisimula madalas yung problema. Kasi <laughs> pag dinesignate sila, so lost sila, di ba? Saka kayo magkoconsult sa amin na parang, ma'am, ano pong gagawin namin? Tapos makikita namin na parang may maliro sa workflow ninyo kasi nga, from the very beginning, may problema talaga. Ay, at hindi rin niya alam how to resolve this. So, I think, um, yeah. So, bakas, I think pakakatulong tong program na to talaga. Ma'am, nabanggit niyo po kanina yung about sa scholarship. May scholarship program din po ba ang UP para sa ating Master in Archives and Records Management? Um... Kasi po tayo ay state university. <laughs> Ayun na uh, yun. Currently, yeah, meron sila, pwede sila, meron silang pwedeng i-check dun sa, uh, sa UP, you know, dun sa website ko, ni mga possible scholarships that they can apply to. I think I ha- I know some graduate students ng UP na nag-apply like, sa, I forgot the name of that scholarship. Pero, uh, yun, they can check the website of UP. Uh, for other scholarships, baka may mga private scholarships, then you can check with your organizations, di ba? Kasi usually, pat, baka pag-arali naman kayo, di ba? Nung, nung mga respective uh, organizations ninyo. Um, yung sinasabi ko kanina about scholarship, scholarship in terms of research yon. 
Okay, so when we say um, scholarship, pwede yun yung pang tuition. Pwede rin naman yung isang scholarship yung about research. You know? So that's why uh, we're putting so much emphasis on the theories and the concepts of records and records and archiving. Because those who would like to do research, for instance, about archives and history and culture, maaari nyo kuhanin itong course na to, or yung program na to. Yes, ma'am. Kasi nabanggit nyo kanina, di ba, na it's a non-thesis, itong program po na ito. Though, meron po tayong mga case studies. So, ma'am, baka pwedeng uh, pa-share kung <laughs> ano yung examples po ng mga case studies na ito, ma'am. Ah, okay. You possible the capstone projects. Parang ganun po. Um, pwede po nga, no, um, development of a records management program for, for a certain organization. Or pwede rin kayong gumawa ng... Um, uh, pwede rin selection and appraisal plan for uh, for a certain cultural organization. Pwede rin naman na evaluation, kung ano, not evaluation, siya doon na mahabag. Um, pwede siguro yung uh, pag, pag-create ng file plan for a local government unit records office. So usually capstone projects have uh, a very concrete or tangible uh, output. I like yung sa research kasi yung thesis well, of course, ang Evelias na thesis talaga. Meron, kumbaga, theoretical, we're extending theories and we're trying to do theory building for the thesis. But for the capstone projects, oh, we have the tangible. So, yung, at the end of the project, may makikita ka na, ah, ito yung pwede natin maibigay na sa institution. Ito yung maibibigay natin na para matulungan yung isang institution. So, mga ganun. And then, don't worry kasi, um, through the through the coursework, kasi Sabi ko nga, di ba, para siyang step by step. Through the coursework, matuturuan din kayo how to actually come up with a capstone project. So, tuturuan kayo how to come up with a file plan, how to do, uh, how to, uh, let's say, assess the value of the record so that you can do appraisal and then you know how to retain them and how to properly dispose them off if needed. So, mga ganun. So, okay, pwede rin, ano, preservation plan para sa isang museum. <laughs> preservation plan para sa isang library. So, pwede yan, mga ganong classing projects. Nag-i-imagine na po yung mga kasama natin dito eh, kung kukuha daw po sila ng mar, ma'am, at ano yung kanilang pwedeng uh, tangible project na ikakandang oh, sa kanilang locality. <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry po, you will be guided by the faculty. So, we have faculty members who are um, talagang, who have the expertise to to, to help you with your projects, and also not just the project, yung, yung, yung buong program ninyo, para masigurado natin na matutunan ninyo yung, yung subjects, and also yung ma-apply nyo yon sa respective institutions ninyo. I think that's really the goal of this program. Speaking of faculty, ma'am, sino-sino po yung mga faculty na mag-guide at uh, magtuturo po sa program na ito? So, bukod sa akin, <laughs> so nakilala niyo na po ako, hello po. So, makikita po tayo kung sakaling kayo ay mag-apply. So, we also have uh, the dean, the current dean of the UP School of Library and Information Studies, uh, Professor Mary Grace Valpe Barcelona. Hello, dean. <laughs> if you're watching. Yeah. Um, siya de, kasi, um, she has a, a master's degree in archival studies from the University of Manitoba. She's currently finishing her PhD in anthropology in University of Manitoba. Then, and then uh, we also have Professor Jonathan Isip. Um, he finished his Master of Archives, Master of Archives and Records Management from the University College, University College London, UCL. And then uh, we also have Professor Bono Olgado, Benedict Olgado. Yes, he, uh, he he has a master's degree in audiovisual archive, moving images and audiovisual archives from the New York University, and he's currently finishing his PhD in informatics at UCI in in the US. And um, pa ba? So kami yung apat talaga na, na full time, and we also we're also inviting others then uh, um, kasama. Kasama din namin actually si Farmer Dean Katlin Lourdes Ubilie kasi he, uh, kinatarget namin yung mga about ethics, yeah, philosophy, and ganyan. So she will also be handling some courses. And also Professor um, <laughs> si Professor Paul Jason Perez uh, kasi naman, uh, kanya naman yung mga web archiving. You know? So he finished his master's in information management from University of Technology Sydney in Australia. 
Tapos, sino pa ba? Marami pa pong iba. And we are also inviting other practitioners, ano? And plus, um, other uh, affiliate faculty from different colleges in UP, like history, anthropology, and Asian studies, and arts and letters. So, like, um, kaya ko papasin niyo, nagko-converge talaga yung allied disciplines kasi as you can see, it's highly multidisciplinary po itong program na to. Ano pag sinasabi nila, kasing bait daw at kasing ganda niya daw po yung magiging faculty po nila, eh, in, nagang baka wow. mag-enroll na sila sa <laughs> Parang motivated eh. <laughs> Ayun, salamat po. <laughs> Ayun, so hope to see you in the program. Ma'am, marami rin pong nag-abang ngayon sa about sa Doctor of Philosophy in Library and Information Science. Ma'am, baka naman po. Oo. Opo. <laughs> Kaya nga po kami nagmamadaling mag-PhD lahat. <laughs> Ayun na, no? Um, yes, um, nasa pipeline naman po. Nasa plano po talaga yon ng, ng, ng UPS Elias to offer um, a PhD in Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be LIS or information studies, so we can cover other areas as well. Again, we're opening our doors to those who are not librarians as well. Kasi para marami tayo na ma makater na other disciplines. So meron tayong librarians, may mga information specialists tayo, and also from those other uh, related and allied fields. So, yeah, wag po kayo magalala. We're working on it. Inuna lang po namin ang aming mga master's programs kasi dati endless lang, ngayon may marm. And then there's really a big demand for PhD in Information Studies or LA and LAS. So we're working on it po. Wag po kayo magalala. Uh, pag dalong po, pag nanumbalik na rin, nanumbalik, bumalik yung mga um, nag-aaral. As you can see, kung nababalitaan nyo rin po, talaga nag-aaral po yung mga ibang faculty namin. So paisa-isa kami umaalis at bumabalik. So hopefully po, pagdasal po natin na uh, ayun, na uh, ayun, matapos din yung preparations namin for that. At hindi po kasi siya madali. Medyo mada mahaba po talaga yung proseso. Well, dito kasi sa Region 1, isa lang ba ang ano yung nag-offer uh, ng Master in Library Information Science? Mm -hmm. uh, St. Louis lang daw po. So sa Region 1 po yun, eh, isa lang And uh, wala na po silang ibang mapuntahan pang iba na ibang program. So maganda din po na na-introduce na sa atin itong Master in Archives and Records Management. Kasi meron pa palang ibang aligned din sa mga librarians natin na pwede po nilang mapuntahan. And uh, considering po na dito po sa Region 1, isa lamang po yung nag-offer ng uh, Master's Degree in LIS. Eh, parang sana ma makarating din po sila oh, makarating din ang UP diliman dito sa sa region 1 or uh, para po ninyo mailalapit pa ma'am yung inyong program po dito po sa ibang regions oo uh -uh. kaya po ano eh um, actually bless parang siguro blessing in this guys i mean when you see good things and ano, all sa mga mga nangyayari sa paligid so even though we really struggled during this pandemic uh we really see this as an opportunity to to test uh how we can handle online learning and teaching kasi uh no una kasi iniisip namin parang ang hirap ang hirap mag-offer ng courses if you do it online how is it possible but During the pandemic, we realized that it can be done. Now we were forced to to adopt. So ngayon, so we we shifted our pedagogical approaches, ano, to to online means, and then nakita namin na ang daming advantages ng ng online, ano. Although syempre nakakamis yung face to face, na nakikipagbantuhan tayo. I wish I could be there, ano. Kakaharap ko sa na kayo nagdaguusap tayo, but yeah, we saw we we we've seen a lot of opportunities there and potential. So, yun nga po yung sinasabi namin kanina na we may, we may consider, we are highly considering to retain this, this kind of modality din na maaari siguro na, siguro pag-uusapan po within the, within the university din on how we can offer our degrees online. Kasi uh, we have to understand that iba rin po kasi yung UP Open University kasi if we have to, let's say, offer uh, a purely online course, Um, it should be under the open U. Yun yung usually iniisap natin, din natin, di ba, open U. So, 
it's going to be a totally different set of faculty dapat. So parang ganun. So ngayon, titingnan namin, ano yung possibility na baka pwede namin i-hybrid para pwedeng kami yung makapag-offer, makapag-reach out, ano? lalo na po sa inyong region. Yeah, I, I, I know na ang region one SLU, yung merong library science, no? And uh, I wasn't able to visit uh, SLU yet, pero SLC nakapunta ko dati. But, yeah. So, yeah. So, sabi ko, parang ang dami pang dapat na mapuntahan ng, 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 ng library science education sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas. Tama po. <laughs> diba? Oo. Kaya, sabi ko nga, sabi ko parang sana makapag-establish pa na mas maraming library schools, no? Pero before we do that, kailangan mag-develop ng maraming library and information science educators. Opo. At ano sabi yeah. na, nagkukulang pa mga librarians po sa bansa. Oo, totoo po. So, pero malaki, yun ang kulang, may demand, pero ayaw nilang kunin. <laughs> yung mga estudyante, <laughs> di ba? Ayaw nilang kunin. Sabi ko, ano ba yan? Pero yun nga. Ang alam nila, not... wala silang mapupuntahan eh, na career, What? di ba? So, hindi nila, hindi nila alam yung career opportunity po. Kaya siguro okay. hesitant silang kumuha ng ganitong programa, ma'am. Mm -mm. Hindi ko nga rin alam eh. Kasi kunyari sa amin, uh, marami naman kaming estudyante. Pero usually, hindi, kami naman, hindi naman kami yung first choice nila eh. Marirealize na lang sila. Kaya lumipat sila sa amin. Pagkita nila, ayos sa'yo pala rito. Di ba? Ang, ang mabait ng prof. Oh, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> kunwari lang yun. <laughs> Ay, ano mo? Ah, uh, yeah, sa kanila marirealize na ang importante pala ganyan. And I think one of the things that we're doing also in UPS Elias is that we already have a GE, GE subject, a general education subject in the undergraduate level on information and society para may makaki para makita din ng other students na from different colleges um na Shucks, ito pala ginagawa ng mga librarians. So, ganito pala kahalaga yung information. And that, nare-realize nila. And some of them express their intention to to enroll in the graduate program. Or some some of them, gusto mag-shift na rin to, <laughs> to LIS. <laughs> so, brainwashing pala. Pero, yeah. So, um, ano naman, ganun na yung nangyayari. I think we have to encourage more um students or um potential students ano, to enroll in the program. Kasi it's a chicken and egg situation, eh. Na parang, wala tayo school, wala magtuturo, wala rin kasi nag-e-enroll. Pero ang konti ng libraryans natin. Diba? So how do we solve that? Oo. Ayun lang. Oo, kasi marami kasing nagsasabi na anong ginagawa ng mga librarians nakaupo-upo lang naman, di ba ma'am? Parang yun kasi yung notion ng iba. Pero behind that, marami talagang career opportunities for librarians. Ito. Tsaka hindi na naman ganun kadali, di ba, yung trabaho ng mga librarians. Ako nga, ma'am, eh, hindi naman po ako librarian, di ba? Pero na-appreciate ko through this program, nakilala ko yung trabaho ng mga librarians ngayon. And, uh, di ba, mas ma-encourage din natin yung mga kabataan na to enroll also. But then, uh, speaking of enrollment, no? ma'am, open na ba ang MARM program at kailan po ang enrollment yan sa UP Diliman? Ah, yeah. Um, so this is slated to be offered um, this academic year 2022-23. So yung um, yung first intake na to, siguro around uh, kasi hindi po na, wala pa po kasi academic calendar dahil sa pandemic. So hindi namin alam kaya lang pa magse-start talaga yung first semester ng 2022, but I think it will be in August. So probably yung magiging enrollment or application po, siguro mga two months before that. So, yun. Pero tingnan nyo na lang po yung website and social media accounts of the UPS Elias regarding announcements no, for the first intake of the MARM program. Very active po kami sa social media at saka yung, ano, so you, you won't miss it. So, kailangan updated tayo doon ha, sa social media at saka oh, sa website nila. Mag-subscribe na po kayo. Opo. Subscribe oh. po kayo sa aming Facebook account. <laughs> so, facebook.com slash UPS Elias. Oh. Yes. Baka meron po kayong mga encouraging words po kung bakit kami, ah, <laughs> including na, <laughs> kung bakit po kami mag-enroll mag sa MARP. Okay. Encouraging words. <laughs> okay. Um, Well, well, alam naman natin lahat ano, kung gaano kahalaga ang records, gaano kahalaga ang archive sa atin, gaano kahalaga ang kultura, ang kasaysayan. At kapag nawala itong mga to, 
uh, hindi na natin siya mababalik eh. Diba? And one way to address that problem or to avoid that danger is for us to be formally educated. Hindi natin sinasabi na yung mga trainings, ano, yung mga seminars and workshops ay wala silang halaga. Of course, nakakatulong sila. Pero nais nice natin na magkaroon talaga ng mas magandang foundation. Mas magandang foundation. Bakit natin ginagawa itong mga bagay na to? Again, as I said earlier, itong purpose na to, yung, yung underlying purpose of what we do as archivists and records managers, this would also help us realize no, kung, kung, kung ano yung mga dapat natin tingnan na direction for the profession and how we can actually preserve this documentary heritage. So if you have that kind of purpose, you have that goal, ano, at sinasabi niyo sa sarili ninyo na gusto kong, gusto kong makatulong para sa kasaysayan ng bansa, para sa kultura ng, 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 ng community ko, for my for my representation, for our representation, then I guess um, this program will be best for you dahil ito yung primary goal ng program. Eh. Ito, kaya namin ginawa itong program na to Hindi lang para dumami ang master's programs namin, but to to save, ano, to save and preserve and also to represent ano, those who are underrepresented or even misrepresented through records. So, sana makita namin kayo sa programa. Makikita tayo doon. At, um, okay, magalala, again, ng thesis, tuwan-tuwa sila. <laughs> we took that into consideration as well, ano? Are we going to have a thesis program or a non-thesis program? Of course, in UP, it's highly encouraged to, to have thesis programs rather than um, non-thesis. Pero we were able to, to, um, ano ba? To, to make some adjust, adjustments and also to defend the no, itong non-thesis program na to. So, sana, sana, kayo ay mag-enroll, pag-isipan natin, at magkita-kita tayo doon. Ayan, thank you so much, ma'am. Parang naantig naman ako sa <laughs> encouragement ni ma'am. So, Besides, yes. grabe, as in talaga, pu- lahat ng puso and energy namin, nilagay namin doon sa program. Uh, hindi, kung, kung alam nyo lang yung behind the scenes ng paggawa namin ng program, grabe, yung stress level ko siguro <laughs> ang taas. Kasi eh, hindi lang siya, hindi lang kami naglista ng ano eh, kung wag parang pinrepare namin siya dahil gusto namin na mas makatulong, mas makareach out sa mas madami. Yung kakayanin ng lahat, yung ma-appreciate ng lahat. So yun yung ginawa, yun yung talaga yung idea namin when we designed the program. Ayan, yung preparation talaga, madugo. Opo, <laughs> sobrang na, dugo. Nakalatag na siya. So, ayan, mag enroll ng marami nating mga estudyante po, ma'am. Ako. So, bago po namin kay bibitawan, ma'am, ay siguro mensahe po muna ulit, no? Mensahe po sa ating mga listeners and viewers po, ma'am. Ma'am Ira? Uh, uh, another encouraging word. <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> Ano ba pong mensahe? Ayun, so, uh, kung kayo po ay nag-iisip na na mag-enroll na sa program or tingnan ninyo yung programa namin, uh, marami pong salamat as our BS now. Maraming salamat for showing your interest to our program. Um, alam ko, hindi madali na mag whether you will be pursuing graduate studies or not. Because, maski naman ako, na pagkatapos ko ng BLIS ko, akala ko, di na ako mag-aaral eh. Diba? So, tas, tas PhD pa. <laughs> so, parang, ganun naman eh. When we make our decisions, and dami natin considerations na kailangan natin tingnan. So, sana, um, i-consider nyo rin yung MARM. Or kung MLIS, okay lang naman din. I-consider nyo, no? At i-weigh ninyo yung options ninyo. At again, salamat sa inyo kung nag-iisip kayo na kayo ay mag-pursue ng graduate studies. Thank you very much po, ma'am, sa oras po na binigay niyo po sa amin. At ngayon po, no, no? Ay, meron po kaming napulot. No? Marami kaming napulot dito sa programa po na ino-offer po ngayon ng UP Diliman of Open Next School Year 2022-2023 Master in Archives and Records Management Program of UPSLIS. So bago po namin kibibitawan mo, meron po muna i-award o ipipresent na e-certificate si Dr. Nancy Galban po para sa inyo. Ma'am Nancy? Okay. Dr. Ira, sa yeah. po natin. Uh, gusto ko mag-enroll ah, kahit na senior citizen na ako. <laughs> Ay naku ma'am, wala naman pong age limit ma'am. Okay. Welcome po kayo. <laughs> okay, ayan. Pero mag- maganda siya, this is a best, uh, one of the best avenues natin na ma-market natin itong bagong internet. 
uh, program ng you okay, aside from imlist so don maria Marcos, maria state university sa pilang na onion ano siya uh, integrated library system presents this certificate of appreciation to dr ira s ben rostro kabab associate professor University of the Philippines, Diliman, School of Library and Information Studies, for sharing her invaluable knowledge and expertise on the topic Master in Archives and Records Management Program of the University of the Philippines, SLIS, an overview. During the Dimsu Library on Air program at South La Union Campus, Ago La Union. Given this 17th day of December 2021, Signed, uh, Dr. Jaime Ipak Manuel Jr., University President. Ma'am. <laughs> Thank you po. Maraming salamat. Yeah, salamat din po ma'am for gracing our uh, library on air. Dimsu Library on air po. Okay. God bless. Okay. Thank you. God bless din po. At sa punto pong ito, kami ay pansamantalang magpapaalam. Ako ang inyong kabasa, Ketli Joyce Perona, with the team library headed by Dr. Nancy F. Galban. And in behalf, we would like to acknowledge Dr. Jaime Ipak Manuel Jr., our University President, Dr. Joan Camos Rivera, Chancellor, Dr. Sonia Shago Isip, the Director of Library Services and Development. Isang mapagpalang umaga, stay healthy and be safe. Always Merry Christmas and a Blessed New Year. At sa ngalan din po ng lahat ng bumubuo ng DZAG Radio Pilipinas Ago, o, headed by Station Manager Ms. Maricel Fronda, ito po ang inyong lingkod, Charity Jimenez Frianeza, nag na po ng isang magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. God bless everyone, stay safe and stay healthy. Happy weekend. Um, photo of picture po.